Welcome back to AP Pre-Calculus in under 3 minutes. No time for intros, let's get into it. Topic 2.5 is all about building exponential functions from scenarios. Now listen, this isn't complex. You can tell an exponential function is a best fit for a scenario if you see it based on multiplication, and you should already know how to build an exponential function from my Topic 2.2, 3, and 4 videos, and you should know how to model from scenarios from my Topic 1.13 video, so I'm not going to simply repeat everything I said. There is, however, a lot of other things from this topic we need to talk about. Understand that you only need to be given two points or, dare I say, input-output value pairs to derive an exponential function to fit the model. You do this by solving a system of equations which you should have been taught how to do back in algebra, but if you still need help with it, here is two examples of me solving systems of equations with exponential functions, and use the transformations discussed last video to mess around or tweak exponential functions to what the questions are asking. Also understand that exponential functions are used and written in different ways to represent interest and compound interest in real life, with b as the growth factor, and though you don't need to memorize these interest equations for the AP exam, they are often required for schools throughout America to teach, which is why they're on the screen right now. This all leads into E. E is a massively long number that we're going to round to 2.718. E is the base of a natural exponential function that is used to model continuous growth or decay in real-life scenarios, like continuously compounded interest. Unlike regular growth factors, E is special because it allows us to model processes that change at a rate proportional to their current value. E is a complex topic and takes a while to understand, but it's not that crucial to understand for the AP exam. One thing that is crucial is how to model exponential functions on calculators. Just as you have all the polynomial regressions, you you also have the EXP regression you can run to see if your data is exponential, so keep that in mind. On the screen now are some AP style questions for this topic. Pause now. I'll put the work and answers on the screen now. See you in the next one!